Oh, you have to stay to the word. <laughs> With John Sayles, there's no ad-libbing. Um, he wrote the script, first of all. You know, he's not one of the directors who just, you know, yeah, give me your scripts, I'll see what I like. No, he is invested in this project, and he directs people's talents, but he doesn't, he, that's just one thing I heard him say on set, he doesn't teach actors to act. It's the last stand for Tyrone Purvis and the Honey Dripper Lounge. Lucky, okay, give me two weeks. Lucky, got a better offer. Yeah. In Honey Dripper, John Sale's latest film, I play a character named China Doll, who is the stepdaughter of Danny Glover's character, uh, Tyrone Purvis, who owns the juke joint in the film. First of all, John Sale's being the director, you know, I grew up watching his movies and, I mean, it's just amazing to see someone who is so committed to making art. I had the rheumatic fever when I was little and left me with a weak heart. Oh. You know, I've been acting kind of funny too. About since I laid eyes on you. When you watch his films, it's so refreshing. So actually having the opportunity to be in one was totally unexpected, especially this early on in my career, and also, I mean, just amazing on set, watching not only him direct, but all the seasoned actors and trained actors performing. My very first scene was with Charles Dutton and Gary Clark Jr. and Danny Glover, and he gives you space in the beginning to try, you know, to see what's going to happen. He lets the process happen organically because actors feed off of each other's energies, but he definitely steps in and, and mediates or says, okay, you wanted to go a little bit more this way or that way. But it was really interesting to see him work, especially under such time pressure because it is a low budget film. And in that situation where you have you know a few weeks to shoot an entire film with so many different colors and layers going on, I mean, okay, two takes, do we get it? And he knows he got it because he's editing in his head. So even if I feel like, oh, I didn't have a great performance that time, or oh, I messed up a line, he's got this take of this, he's gonna put that line, and from the other take, he's fine, moving on. And you just had to trust. I think, even though I had done acting as a little, little girl, when I was in junior high school, I think it was the first time that I realized that this was something that I really wanted to do. And I had an amazing acting coach who taught in the New York City public schools. And um, I opted for her elective, got in, and it really changed my life. I didn't have an easy time in junior high school. And that was just the highlight of my week, going to acting class. And actually, She's a professional coach now, and I go back to her um, every week. But she's amazing, and she would send me out on uh, auditions. And my first job, you know, I got like $100 as an 11-year-old doing educational films. That was a big deal. I'm still New York-based. I hear a lot of people say that moving to Los Angeles from wherever in the country you're from uh, is a really good step. And I believe that. I don't know that it's a necessary step. Uh, a lot of people say it is, and I haven't done it yet, so I really don't know where that would take me. And I've gone to L.A. for a specific job and then flown right back home to New York. Um, but it's very, you know, you hear so many different things about the difference between New York and L.A. and how the business runs, the quality of acting or the style of acting, I should say. Not necessarily that one's better than the other, but it's just different. And New York has a lot more theater, and I'm still very thirsty to be back on stage. I left Alabama with a whole new enthusiasm because I felt like I understood the craft even more um, because I was just on set all the time watching and soaking up all of this information. and. Also stories, you know, I, I mean, Charles Dutton is an amazing storyteller and a lot of, and also Ruben Santiago Hudson was on set for a few days in, in the bar playing the drunk guy so perfectly. And it was just amazing hearing their stories about being 
on Broadway back in the day doing this play, doing August Wilson and you know all these great black plays and all these amazing projects. And here they were, you know, together in a film. And when do you get to see so many great black actors it, together in a film and in a film that makes us proud, you know, and it's a positive film and it tells great stories. Doesn't make us embarrassed like some. It's very, it's just great. It's a family film, you know, you can go trusting that you're not going to have to like do this cover <laughs> or this to your child, you know, the future. Well, I have, I have, I'm very hopeful for my future as well as the future of the planet. Um, but I really can only focus on the craft and my goal right now is just to continue studying and doing my work so that I can be phenomenally prepared for any opportunity that comes my way. Hi, I'm Yaya DaCosta and you're watching Real Black.